Now let's have some tips before we go into an example and start to learn how to roll the numbers to solve projectile motion or in specific horizontal projectile motion. First, when you have V initial going to the right, in this case, V initial represented as VX. In this case, VY is zero. The motion to the right on the X axis, it's not going upwards in any way. So VY is zero, keep that in mind. When you go in a certain angle, look at it as a component or as a vector over here. So V initial is going here at certain angle. What is VIX? Trigonometry, that's VI cosine theta and VY, VIY is VI sine theta. Now sometimes and many times in projectiles, the velocity is going downwards with an angle. So again, you need to decide where is your angle. That's your angle next to the X axis, theta. VIX equals VI cosine theta to the, to the positive side and VIY equals minus VI sine theta because the initial velocity on the Y axis is going downward in this case, which is negative. So just a refreshment on the X axis, any motion to the right is considered a positive motion. Any motion to the left or to the minus side of the X axis is considered a minus motion. Any motion on the Y axis to the top is a positive motion. Any motion going downward is a negative motion. Now for the X direction, there is no acceleration in the X direction. So always AX equals zero. And AX will always be zero. The projectile undergoes uniform motion in the X direction. The general equation for the initial X component of the velocity can be determined using trigonometry, which we said VIX equals VI cosine theta. And the range you need to remember equals delta DX. That's how far the ball go from the moment it left its initial point to the moment it hits the floor again. And the projectile is moving in the horizontal and vertical direction at the same time. So delta T is a common variable. So when you see delta T from the moment it left to the moment it hit the floor, it represents delta T for the X and for the Y axis. For the Y direction, if it is up positive and there's acceleration due to gravity down and it would be negative. So AY which is the acceleration due to gravity in projectiles, that's minus 9.81 meters per second squared. The Y component of the initial velocity can be determined using trigonometry, which we showed already, VIY equals VI sine theta, and you need to be careful about is it going upwards or downwards to decide the right uh, sign for it in this case. Displacement in the Y direction is delta DY, time is delta T for both X and Y. As a little table in x direction, ax is zero, and vix equals vi cosine theta, delta dx equals vx multiplied by delta t. It's not v, it's vx in this case. y direction, ay minus 9.81 meters per second squared, viy equals vi sine theta, and viy can be positive or negative depending on direction. Delta dy will be represented in this equation, which is viy multiplied by delta t plus one over two, ay multiplied by delta t, multiplied by delta t squared. Don't be scared about it, it's simple. You have V initial, you have delta t, then you have delta t here again, and you have the ay, which would be in many cases given in the problem within no complication. Now let's take an example on horizontally launched projectile motion. The author here seems like um, he had the appetite to write a lot. We had a cliff in short story, and uh, the cliff would have um, animals on its edge, and there is that cliff, how high it is, 20 meters tall. You assume the plane was uh, flat so that the animals can run horizontally off the cliff and the animal, which is bison in this case, was moving at the maximum speed of 18 meters per second at the time of the fall. Determine how far from the base of the cliff the bison landed. So you have a cliff, there's an animal running over the cliff and he's jumping off the cliff. He's bored of his life. He need to finish it. So we're given here, in the X direction, we, we have the speed of the bison. He was running like crazy over the cliff, 18 meters per second to his promised destiny. And it was 18 meters per second in the Y direction. AY is by gravity 9.81. By the way, many examples, they will not give it to you. They assume you know it. And it is not the total number in this case. It is a simplified number for uh, gravity acceleration, but it works. So downward means, in this case, he decided to give it a plus 9.81. But if you want to 
do the tradition to have any motion downwards is plus, then any motion upwards should be negative. Delta dy is 20 meters. That's how high is the cliff. What he needs, he needs distance from the base of the cliff, which is the range. How far did the bison go? That's delta dx, as you know. Let's go with the analysis and solution. So we go to our equation. Um, to find uh, delta dx, we need vix multiplied by delta t, right? But we don't know delta t. But we have, in this case, delta dy. We have viy and we have ay. So we can find delta t from here. So delta dy, viy multiplied by delta t plus 1 over 2 by ay by delta t squared. Viy is 0, we said, because he was running firstly horizontally, then he jumped off the cliff. And uh, plus 1 over 2 ay, which is 9.8 by delta t squared. Let's rearrange the equation. Delta t would be the square root of 2 by delta dy over ay. We have all those are as given. So delta t is 2.019 seconds. How to find delta dx? Delta dx is vix by delta t. We have vix 18 meters per second by the delta t, which is common for both the x and y. That would give you the range. How far did the bison die on the floor from the initial point? 36.3 meters. That was the range of the sad story of the depressed bison.